Hello everyone, I'm Gary York. Thanks for tuning in to True Prison Stories. I'm doing something a little different today. I'm not a big self-promoter, but today I decided to promote my third book. Everybody else is promoting their stuff, so why not I get out here and tell you a little bit about my third book. Um, first video I've done on uh, going over one of my books and what you can get if you purchase it. Now this book, The Toughest Job, Correctional Officer USA, just came out last year. You can get this book for only $8.50 and you can get it, I believe, for $2.99 on Kindle. I don't write my books to make a living. You know, I, I write the books to help educate and inform, and I and I hope it helps people. I have gotten feedback from people on my books, and and uh, they've they've liked them. And if you decide after this video to get this book on Amazon, uh, eight fifty paperback, two ninety nine Kindle, let me know what you think. Now, this book is for correctional officers, and about correctional officers, and about the challenges they face every day. You'll hear from correctional officers around the country at the very beginning that will give you some of their thoughts on, on their careers of being a correctional officer and what it meant to them. The foreword in this book was written by an Oklahoma uh, prison warden who uh, tells about uh, the importance of being in corrections, and I think you would find him very interesting. Um, also in this book, you're going to learn about uh, professional ethics and how we should conduct ourselves in uniform. I started out with that because I always think that's very important that we conduct ourselves professionally and we don't taint the image of the correctional officer uniform and we represent our agency and our community trust. So I thought that was an important chapter to start off with. And then I go into perception versus reality, what people think we are as correctional officers and what we really do. You know, people that don't know what we do have all kinds of ideas in their head about us and, and correctional officers. So I think it's very important that we get that uh, reality out there to the public and to the people we work for, to the taxpayers, to let them know what we really have to go through in our job. And this book tells you what we have to go through. As I go on, you'll see why. Officer attitude is in here as well. I think officer attitude is, is a really important thing because I'm retired. Some of these people are still active in the comments at the beginning of the book. Some are not. Uh, some are retired. And in order to get through this profession or job, whatever you wish to call it, you have to have an attitude that will get you through this, a good attitude. Because not everybody, as you know, can handle the job of a correctional officer. We'll talk about that in here. Getting through your rookie year. I wanted to get that in there for all the newcomers. There's a chapter on getting through your rookie year. Um, that's not always easy for everybody. Some people breeze through it and do just fine, and others have a very hard time getting through their rookie year. Uh, you'll also know why it is important for the success of corrections to have our women correctional officers. We must have them to be successful in corrections. I'm not going to tell you all about it right now, but it's in here on why they're integral to the, to the success of corrections and why they are so important in our job and in our field. We're also going to talk about inmate manipulation. Okay, there's my version of inmate manipulation in here. And also, there's a chapter by Anthony Ganji in here about some inmate manipulation. I'm going to talk about some of these other people that are in my book at the end and, and recommend their books as well. Uh, documenting inmate threats is in here, why it's so important. Warning signs that we need to look for when inmates are about to fight or there's about to be a riot or something's just not right. Something you have to learn as you go on as a correctional officer. There's some tips in here about that. Prison contraband. Huge. That's in here. How to, how, how, why it's important to find, to locate, find, and, and, and remove prison contraband. 
Hostage situations is in here. Hospital watch is in here. Escape and recapture is in here. All these tips in here that can help you as a correctional officer coming into the job or if you've been here a while, it should be able to help you. You know, you know, we all feel that after we get 10 years under our belt, boy, we know everything. But let's face it, folks, 28.8 years for me, and I don't know everything. I learn something new every day. I don't think we should get to the point of being so cocky that we think we know everything and we make a mistake. Always always learn new things, new technology coming in, new, new tricks that the inmates use to get over on us. It's always something new. We're always learning. We never know it all. And if you, I believe if you go in with that attitude of I don't know it all, you'll actually do better in your job because you're striving to learn and keep up with new things that are happening behind those prison and jail walls. Um, also, um, cross-training with other agencies is in here. Discussion about why it's important to cross-train with our local agencies. Identifying gang members, which is in here, which is always important. Crisis intervention. Learning how to deal with certain inmates with mental, mental health inmates, um, inmates with anxiety. Okay, no, we're always going to protect ourselves. Please don't get me wrong. You will always protect yourself because you want to go home at night. But there are some inmates that if you stop and think and look at them, we can deal with them by de-escalation and verbal judo. Folks, it's, it happens all the time. We do not always have to go hands-on. It's in the book talking about about crisis uh, intervention. Inmate attacks. I have several real-life scenarios of different prisons and jails across, across the country. I believe four, four chapters on four different incidents on officers being attacked and what we can do to learn from that. And there's things, there's questions in there that we try to answer. Questions you may come up with on, on, on the scenario or what to do about the scenario or ideas you may come up with yourself. I try to outline some of the things that we need to do, need to be aware of, need to look out for. So these are real life scenarios. I just uh, think, you know, that um, there are some important things in here that can help you get uh, through your career. Dr. Michael Patero is in here from the American Military University. A great chapter by him. He's a former uh, corrections person of 16 years and now a, a criminal justice professor. Um, so he's not just a prof professor uh, talking the talk. He walked the walk as well. I think you'll find his chapter very interesting. Uh, as I said, on the back of the book, I recommend people. We have Keith Helwig, a captain from Wisconsin Corrections gave uh, a quick uh, summary of corrections for our, for the book. Uh, he is also the author of No Place Like Home and Morning Will Come. Uh, Connie Aileen is a mental health professional, supervisor, and teacher. She uh, teaches a corrections academy uh, for, for the folks that are going into uh, mental health and so forth. It's the Civilian Corrections Academy. For civilian employees, her book, The Cage Was Her Cocoon, she is a great uh, corrections professional. She is in here as well. So you got uh, uh, Michael Patero, Keith Helwig, uh, Connie Aileen, and Anthony Ganji throwing in their thoughts in this. We have some correction officer prayers by a lieutenant and a captain. Correction officer Captain Steve Best and retired correction officer, Lieutenant George Cruz. Little correction officer prayers there that I think are, are always nice to have. If we go into work, uh, not preaching to you, but say a little prayer, keep us safe while we're going to walk the line today. I think that's always a good thing to have. And at the back of the book, uh, America's Frontline Law Enforcement Corrections Gifts and Memorabilia. I put that in there as well in case you want to buy your loved one who's in corrections a nice gift for a special occasion. Or if you want to order coins for your uh, agency, 
They've done a great job. Your shift did a great job. Use this and, and, and order some coins. Um, and I put some recommended uh, readings in here. And some recommended YouTubes. True Prison Stories by Gary York. Tear Talk, hosted by Anthony Ganji. Cops and Corrections, hosted by Keith Helwig. And Just Corrections, hosted by William Young. I tried to get in my book things that you need. Just jumping right into the meat. No big long stories in here, just facts. Remember Joe Friday, for those of you that are as old as me, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Straight facts in here. We don't have war stories in here. This isn't a book about Gary York and his career. This is a book of facts and things to educate and inform you as an officer. If you find it interesting, check it out on Amazon. I appreciate you, and today I tooted my own horn. Sorry about that. Thank you, folks. Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe.